Good afternoon and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 24th of February 2020 and the time has just gone 12.05 GMT. And it's been a pretty brutal start to the trading session here in Europe. Um, essentially, uh, the coronavirus has taken, for, has taken hold in Italy. Um, sadly, there's been an increase in the number of fatalities in relation to the health, to the health crisis. With that, a couple of provinces and a couple of regions in northern Italy uh, appear to be in a lockdown. A number of towns essentially are in lockdown. Uh, public buildings closed. And this has caused major widespread fear across European, <coughs> across the Italian stock market, but also across the European markets, uh, European equity markets as a whole. And that's filled, filtered in, into sentiment on the uh, on the Dow futures and the US index futures. Um, so what what's the kind of the development in this story has been that a few weeks ago the kind of belief was or the traders held the view that that was a largely far east uh, health crisis or to be precise kind of a Chinese health crisis. Now that we're seeing uh, this spreading further in the far east, but also here in Europe, uh, particularly in Italy, the fear is that this is going to become a, a global issue and seeing as uh, European stocks were kind of held up, held up well, relatively well until, uh, until a short while ago. The kind of traders are now taking the view that this, what we're seeing in Italy, could be chapter one of the kind of wider crisis beginning in uh, really kicking off in Europe. Uh, so keep in mind, you know, the stock 600 um, only last week hit a record high. This this morning, or this, well, this afternoon rather, the, the story in Europe is very different. The FTSE MIB, the Italian market, is down in excess of 4%. The, the, uh, the FTSE 100, the CAC and the DAX are all down in excess of 3%. So we've seen massive losses across the board here on European equity markets. We're seeing a classic kind of uh, risk-off strategy. Stocks are lower. On the flip side, broadly speaking, the Japanese yen is higher, as is the Swiss franc. Not, not higher against every single currency, but they're broadly doing well. And gold is doing well too. So um, it's another kind of class example of a uh, class example of a risk-off play. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll take a quick look at the week ahead article, run through the major economic and corporate stories of the week ahead, and then I'll have a look have a look at some of the big markets. Um, so looking ahead to tomorrow, we have U.S. consumer confidence. Tomorrow we also have fourth quarter numbers out from Home Depot, as we do from Coca Cola. Full year results are expected from Metro Bank on Wednesday. Also Wednesday, Taylor Wimpy, the, uh, the home builder, they're going to be posting numbers. On Thursday, we have US uh, GDP for the fourth quarter. Uh, Thursday, Aston Martins is going to be a, an interesting one. Uh, the company's had quite a bit of problems in, in the last in the last um, in the last number of uh, in the last number of months. So the full year update is going to be uh, is going to be of importance. Looking ahead to Friday, uh, we have full year figures from the London Stock Exchange. Uh, we also have full year figures from Rolls Royce, uh, and also on Friday we have the Eurozone uh, flash CPI reading. So we we'll take a look now uh, at the FTSE 100. As I mentioned, we've had major declines on European equity markets. We can see here we've had a sharp decline uh, on today's trading session. We're basically falling back to levels last seen in uh, in early December. We're not a million, you know, the, the lows of today's session haven't been too far away from this area here in around 7,132. There, thereabouts, the lows of early December. Uh, so if you do press on lower from here, these are the sort of areas we could be looking at targeting. And if you, if you do go below this zone here, it could take us back towards 7,100. And a move below that could take us back towards the lows of early October. If you do have a rebound in the... Um, in the FTSE 100, uh, we could be looking heading back up towards, I would say, 7,300 or this, this red line here, the 200-day moving average, and that comes into play at 7,370. Taking a look at what's going on over in Germany, pretty brutal session there as well. Uh, we, we, we had a, quite a large gap to the decent uh, gap to the downside. Uh, we can see here that the um, we, we've been moving aggressively lower in the trading session. Uh, we've you know we've, we've fallen, we fell to a level last seen uh, at the beginning of the month. So 
uh, nearly three, a nearly three week low, but nonetheless, uh, it's been quite an aggressive sell off. Uh, if it continues to press on lower from here, we could be looking at targeting 13,000, big psychological number. And if we go below that, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around 12,900. We can see on a few occasions that that particular metric actually had a resistance in early October and on a few occasions uh, in late October, in mid December, and also late January. On a few occasions, that area acted as support. And if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future, although there are no guarantees. So a break below that could be quite significant. If you do look to get a rebound from here on the uh, on the DAX, we could be looking heading back towards this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, and that comes into play north of 13,400. Uh, and it's, it, we, we really need to be getting back above that before we can begin to think, you know what, maybe the recent kind of scare in relation to Italy has come to an end. I'll take a look at the Dow Jones now. We're calling, uh, we're calling the Dow Jones uh, massively lower. Um, you can see here that there's, there was a quite a large gap created on the uh, on the uh, on the open between Friday's close and the and the uh, and the and the trading of, of Monday in relation to the hour out of hours uh, pricing. So we're expecting a large drop on the Dow Jones once cash trading gets underway. We can see here that, that the lows of um of our session here on the US 30 haven't been too far away from the lows. Um, achieved in late January. So keep an eye out for this zone here in around 28,164. And if you do have a break below that, it could take us back towards 28,000, a big psychological number. Uh, if we do see a bit of a rebound uh, in, in the Dow Jones, we could be looking at heading back up towards this blue line here, the 50 day moving average. That comes into play in around 28,873, but obviously that's a fair distance away from where we currently are. It's about a 500, 500 points or so away from where we're expecting the Dow Jones to open. Take a look now on the S&P 500. It's a fairly similar situation whereby a fairly large gap was created to the downside. Um, but to be fair to the S&P, it's holding up in a better, position, better state than the, uh, than the Dow Jones, but nonetheless it's, it's still is still looking relatively bearish. Uh, there's a decent gap was created to the downside here. We're currently expecting the S&P 500 to open at 3,266. Keep in mind that the 50 day moving average is north of that in around, in around 3,284. If we can continue to hold below the 50 day moving average, it's likely that we could see further losses in the near term. And should that be the case, if you do press on lower from here, we could be looking at targeting the lows of late January in around this zone here, in around 3,214. And if you do have a decent break below that, it could take us back towards 3,200 or 3,180, 3, that's that 20 point zone. As I mentioned, we've seen major declines in stocks. We have seen a, a decent move to the upside in the gold market. Gold has been pushing uh, steadily higher the last few sessions on account of the fear surrounding uh, the coronavirus crisis. Uh, we're currently seeing gold in around 1680, 1679. We're, we're looking at, we've we hit levels today last seen in early 2013. So give you an indication of how strong uh, the gold market is. And if you look to press on higher from here, we could be looking heading towards 1700. That's pr probably the next big kind of psychological number ahead of us. Even if we do see a bit of a tapering off uh, in the fears, and we do see the gold market pull back a small bit, seeing as we have gained ground the last few sessions, we could look at, at uh, finding support in around this zone here, in around 1649, 1640. And even if you go below that, this zone here, in around the kind of 1611 zone, um, this area here could also act as support. Notice how far we are from this blue line here, which is a 50 day moving average. That's well away. That's in at 1553. And we have quite a large gap between the market and, and this and this and the 50 day moving average. It would suggest that, that the, the market is overstretched, but markets can remain overstre over, overstretched. There's nothing to say that it's, it's absolutely going to turn around. Um, but just something to be mindful of that the gold market is looking reasonably overstretched at the moment. 
Now, the um, other commodities which are, are not doing so well, um, start, starting off, have a look at uh, Brent crude. We can see here that between early January and into the uh, into early February, crude had, had a terrible month. Sold off excessively for about four weeks, all surrounding the kind of China health crisis. The market had a rebound. Here on Brent crude, it kind of it bounced back up toward the kind of 60 zone. Maybe a bit north, perhaps a bit north of it. It's a big psychological number, and then lo and behold, the market has turned over on itself again, and we appear to be moving lower. So, if we do press on lower from here on Brent crude, we could be like retesting the recent lows of, uh, of early February, early to mid February, in around 53 spot 67. And if we go beyond that, we could be heading down towards 52. We'd really need to be kind of taking out the uh, the, the highest here in around 60 spot 28. Before we begin to think that the the market is going to have a, have a uh, is, is market is going to kind of shake off the recent negative trend, and then if we do go beyond that, resistance could could come into play at this red line here, the 200 moving average in at 62 spot 68. That's Brent crude. I take a look at WTI. It's a fairly similar situation where I had a fairly dreadful month between early early January and early February, had a rebound, rebounded up here. Uh, up towards 54 spot 41 we can see here at the uh, the where, it reba where the market where the market kind of ran out of steam was in this kind of consolidation zone in around here the market's now turning lower yet again if we do break below 51 it could take us back down towards this zone here down around 49 spot 29 and a move below that could take us back down towards 48 it's similar to Brent we'd really we'd really need to be taking out the highs in kind of mid to late February before we can before we can begin to think, you know what? Maybe the recent sell-off and the panic the panic surrounding the um, the health crisis has come to an end. And even if you do head north of that, we could run into resistance at this red line here, the eternity moving average, and that comes into play at 56. It's called 28. I take a look at a couple of the currency pairs now, starting off with euro dollar. So euro dollar had quite a negative run um, well, for most of last week. It had a decent rebound uh, on the um, on on Friday. We can see here that was quite a bullish candle here, and it could, it could state it could appear the, the the body of this candle here could suggest that that is a, a daily bullish reversal. It could suggest it, but if it is a daily bullish reversal you'd want to see that be confirmed by continuation of the upward move well we haven't actually done that uh, on, on today's on, on today's session so it's still not particularly clear whether we're looking at, at kind of a turnaround point on euro dollar now if you take a look on the weekly chart we can see here that there was granted on the weekly chart we've had two excessive selling weeks and we had the long wick on this so it would denote indecision, but there's still no kind of guarantee that the market is actually going to fully turn around. And I'm not overly convinced that we're going to see a major rebound in euro dollar just because of today's session has started off well within the kind of body of, a, of, of, fri of Friday's candle. But that being said, if you can get hold above the lows of last week in around 1 spot 0.777, we could stand a chance of heading back up towards 109 or potentially up towards 1 spot 0925 but if we do turn over on ourselves and take and head, take out the recent lows it could take us back towards 1 spot 07 1 spot 06 and the likes lastly I take a look at the, uh, the British pound versus the US dollar so we can see here that for the last few weeks there's been a bit of weakness um, in the uh, in the British pound versus the US dollar not excessively but, but just a small bit so we can see here look at look at about the February from late January going forward we, we had a, a lower low a lower high it couldn't take off this blue line here 50 moving average the lows of late February took off have taken off the lows of mid February um, we're still looking a bit on the kind of soft side in comparison with you know the levels we were at in, in mid-December so if we do drop back below the recent lows here in around one spot 28.49, it could take us back toward, down toward this zone here, down around one spot 27.68. Uh, but keep in mind, if we do manage to push on higher from here, get back above 130, get back above the 50 moving average in at one spot 
it could it could then put us on track over this area here in at one spot 32 um, and then beyond that it could take us towards the late December highs of one spot 3284 keep in mind the wider term view over the last number of months has been very much at the upside on, on pound dollar just be just be mindful of the, the wider upper trend but also it is worth noting that uh, next month we're going to have the uh, the budget announced, and there's talk that we could be it could be uh, a bit of a, a fiscal boost to the UK economy could be revealed in that particular update. Now, thank you for listening. Uh, please tune in next week and have a good trading week.